For two and a half decades, he roamed the globe on 23 different passports. But time was running out for one of the world's most wanted men. Just over two months ago, the mysterious KP is believed to have been secretly abducted from a hotel in Southeast Asia. KP knew that it will end this way. KP was wanted by the Sri Lankan government for a very long time. KP was born Shanmugan Kumaran Tarmalingam, but he was known by many other names. He ran a global arms smuggling and money laundering network for Sri Lanka's Tamil Tigers and was one of their most senior commanders. This photo, with KP at the left, was taken at the wedding of the man who started the Tigers. The terrorist campaign in Sri Lanka could not have been sustained without KP. KP is the man who provided the arms, ammunition, explosives, and the logistics as well as the finance. But although he's still on Interpol's wanted list, KP is now being interrogated back in Sri Lanka. KP has been living on borrowed time. Going down. Professor Rowan Gunaratna runs the International Centre for Political Violence and Terrorism Research in Singapore. He's close to Sri Lanka's Defence Secretary, who's credited with masterminding KP's rendition. Previously, the Israelis, the Americans, did this kind of rendition operations. By bringing KP home, Sri Lanka demonstrated that it will not spare any Tamil tiger or any other terrorist who is going to harm Sri Lanka's national security interests. The undoing of KP started with the Tigers' military defeat in May. After their leader Prabhakaran was killed, KP was anointed as his successor. The Tamil Tigers' new leader has told Channel 4 News that hundreds of fighters are under his command. From an undisclosed location, KP emerged from the shadows into the spotlight on British television. He has never before been interviewed face to face. He spent his life on the run and he now claims authority to speak on behalf of Sri Lanka's vanquished Tamil minority. Still, we have a fighting force. We can continue our armed struggle. We have uh, our friends and fighters, they are in jungle. The Sri Lankan government assessed after Prabhakaran's death that KP posed a single biggest national security threat to Sri Lanka and it was paramount for KP to be brought home. This was the unlikely location of KP's disappearance, a budget hotel in downtown Kuala Lumpur. According to its website, one of the main reasons you should stay at the Tune Hotel is its security. But it wasn't so secure for KP on the 5th of August, when it's thought that he was snatched from here in a joint operation by the Sri Lankan and Malaysian security forces. Exactly how and where KP was snatched hasn't been officially confirmed. But according to a detailed account by a Tamil journalist, KP came to Malaysia from Thailand for a meeting. He was brought to the Tune Hotel by his driver, Apu, and met outside by two Tamil visitors from London. The three men went upstairs to a room for their meeting. There was hostility to KP in some parts of the Tamil diaspora, and it was through meetings like this that he asserted his authority over the Tigers. Monica? After receiving a call on his mobile phone, KP left the room to continue his conversation. The visitors waited for almost 20 minutes, and then went looking for KP, but he'd vanished. So too had his car and driver downstairs. 
After many frantic phone calls, KP's contacts in Kuala Lumpur went and searched the room he'd been staying in. He was missing, but the insulin he took for his diabetes was still there. Was he in fact arrested at the Tune Hotel, as has been reported? Yes, KP was arrested at the Tune Hotel. So what happened after KP left the hotel room? Some reports say he was taken to Bangkok by the Malaysian Special Branch and handed over to the Sri Lankans. Professor Gunaratna tells a slightly different story. KP was taken directly from Malaysia on board a Sri Lankan flight. He flew uh, on business class to Sri Lanka in style. And how do you know this? KP has been a man of deep interest to us for a very long time. And it's another major victory for the Sri Lankan government. The new chief of the LTT, Kumaran Padmanathan, was arrested in Bangkok. Into custody by security divisions in Bangkok, Thailand. When news of his arrest broke, conflicting reports had KP captured in Thailand and Singapore, as well as Malaysia. Good morning, Minister. Good morning. Hey, how are you? Good, thanks. Amos Roberts, Australian Television. Hey, welcome. I wanted clarification from Malaysia's Home Affairs Minister, Hishamuddin Hussein. But no country wants to admit to handing the feared rebel leader over to his enemies, least of all Malaysia, home to around two million Tamils. Can you confirm reports that the former Tamil Tiger leader KP was captured here in Malaysia? I'm not aware of that and I cannot confirm it. So Nor can I deny it? <laughs> not, not confirm or deny? Yeah. So the fact that there are sources close to both the Tigers and the Sri Lankan government who say that he was captured here well, with the cooperation of the Malaysian authorities? Those are the sources uh, that are given to you. They come up to me and tell me what uh, their source of their source uh, is. Then we will do the necessary investigation and I will, I will revert to you on that. But right now I don't have any information on that. Rights groups say if KP was arrested in Malaysia, he should have been extradited, not kidnapped, especially since he faces a risk of torture back in Sri Lanka. Sending somebody back under those circumstances is also uh, unlawful and uh, violates international law. If there are charges to be brought, if there are uh, people who should be pursued, then the Sri Lankan government should make sure that it goes through proper legal channels for that. There was no other way for the Sri Lankan government to do this. I don't think any human rights organization, if it is a human rights organization, should criticize this because KP was the biggest human rights violator. Can you see the Sri Lankan government mounting similar operations against other enemies in the diaspora? Yes, I can, sh I can share with you that the Sri Lankan government is already planning to bring a number of other people home. Tamils around the world are now worried about the long arm of the Sri Lankan government. Although the Tamil Tigers abandon Australia, community leaders like these, meeting in Sydney, have been accused of supporting the rebels. According to media reports in Sri Lanka, the government has a blacklist of 100 Tamils living overseas it wants to prosecute. I don't know whether I'm on the list, um, but I don't want to sound too important, but um, that's, that's a real concern for a lot of the community members. We don't know. I mean, how do we know that's not going to happen even in Australia? So we are worried. Next AGM, next Skype conference. Uh... Dr. Victor Rajakulendran knows he's on one of the lists that's been circulating. Now he wants to find out which countries helped Sri Lanka to capture KP. So who are these friendly countries? That is the Tamil diaspora's question now is. We need to identify the friendly countries so that we can be careful to avoid those friendly countries to go into first. For example, Malaysia, I will never step into Malaysia now. So earlier I decided I will not step into Sri Lanka or for that matter to India. Now I have to add Malaysia to that. Dr. Raja Kalendran says Australia's Department of Foreign Affairs is taking the threat seriously. 
they have also advised us whenever we are traveling outside Australia, uh, we should let the authorities know here so that uh, they can keep an eye on us. They told you to let them know when you yes. travel outside yes. Australia. Yes, and we are doing that and they are time to time they are contacting us and asking whether there is any threat to us. Sri Lanka's High Commissioner in Australia, Seneca Walgampaya, offers no reassurance. If the Sri Lankan government was involved in investigating Tamils here in Australia, would you be aware of it, sir? No, no, I'm not informed. These are all been done in Colombo and I've not been kept informed of that. So it's possible that people like Dr Raju Kulendran are being investigated, but you wouldn't know about it if that was the case? Well, I don't know. I have no information whatsoever on that. Professor Gunaratna believes some Tamils in Australia should be investigated. There are a number of professionals who are living in Australia and they have supported a terrorist group by providing them funds, by distributing their propaganda, by advocating violence and by supporting a group that conducted violence. And I believe that they should be prosecuted. They have to first prove to the Australian government if there are any people in Australia, Tamil people, who have done that. The Australian government only will have to take action about that. Two and a half months have now passed since KP was captured and the Sri Lankan authorities are still questioning him. He's being held under anti-terrorism laws and hasn't yet been charged or appeared in court. What we have is uh, an unlawful process that takes uh, somebody who's suspected of doing criminal uh, action or human rights violations basically outside the law. And that makes it vigilantism, that makes it vengeance, but it doesn't make it justice. Every terrorist has his day including Osama bin Laden, including Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, including Prabhakara. The terrorists can run, but they can't hide. Eventually, they will be brought to justice. This is the story of Kumaran Padmanadan.